When you look at some of the best young players in the world, specifically at around age 20 or younger, the biggest ones are Jude Bellingham, Pedri, Gavi, Jamal Musiala, Chavi Simmons, and okay, we can maybe even throw in Ansu Fati or Rasmus Hoyland. And of course, everyone is often paying attention to these guys, as they're often in the spotlight playing more attacking football and are able to shine by having more touches or chances to dribble the ball. But there's another 20-year-old, one who more so than any of those guys I mentioned earlier is a more complete footballer who is so diverse, he could excel in literally any position. One of the most underrated young wonder kids in the world. Of course, I'm talking about no other than Eduardo Camavinga. Camavinga is honestly already one of the most diverse and versatile players in the world, despite his insanely young age. And just watching him, he passes the eye test with flying colors. Regardless of his position, he always plays defense in how he maintains possession while being a very technically gifted passer. A player that embodies the idea of positionless football that you could honestly fit in any formation or in any club. And as funny as the memes are, they're there for a reason. Because it's honestly true. If you ever need a defender, Camavinga already plays defense like a veteran, who is insanely good at executing and timing his tackles. If you ever need a box-to-box -box midfielder that can do it all from maintaining possession to creating space for his teammates and building the attack himself, Camavinga is the solution. And if you ever need a goalkeeper because yours is injured, Camavinga is not only the solution, but also has approval from Courtois. And if by some chance Real Madrid ever needs an emergency striker, well, lucky for them, Eduardo Camavinga literally started his career as a striker. He has the skill, intelligence, physicality, and immaturity to do it all. And at such a young age to be already so composed at the game, the sky is truly the limit for the youngster, as one of the most unique set of skills a footballer could ever have. But perhaps that unique skill set is due to his incredibly unique childhood upbringing. One that I promise you definitely won't see from your average football wonder kid. So this is how Eduardo Camavinga is rising up to be the most versatile footballer in the world. Like I said, Camavinga had a very different childhood from what you'd normally expect from your typical footballer. He was born in a refugee camp in Angola in 2002, as his parents were fleeing a civil war in their home country of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And so the Camavinga family would escape to find refuge in France when he was just two years old. And football had never even been his favorite and first sport growing up. The young Eduardo Camavinga had originally started off with a judo. You'll often hear about footballers starting off solely from football or maybe some other team sport, but Camavinga would build his foundations from martial arts. And anybody who's ever practiced martial arts will know, one of the most basic things to learn is how to read your opponent. And I'd argue compared to any other sport, noticing the slightest movements and difference in body language is the most important thing in martial arts. And it was this judo foundation that really helped Camavinga develop elite awareness at an early age. And funnily enough, the way he was introduced to football was because his mother was tired of him breaking things inside the house, practicing judo. And so she would try to convince him to put all that energy by signing him up to play for the town's local youth club. And much to the surprise of everyone, Camavinga was just such a natural at football that he would be encouraged by everyone around him to eventually go and try out for a professional academy, in which he would eventually be selected by Liga Academy Ren. But it wasn't until 2013 that Camavinga would put down judo and put 100% of his focus on football. Because despite the good news of his acceptance, at the age of 11, just a couple months later, Camavinga's home would tragically burn down in an electric fire. And it was after this tragic event that his father would tell him, You are now the hope of the family. It is you who will raise it up. And these words forced the youngster to basically mature overnight but it would actually help him incredibly throughout his career. As from that moment forward, Camavinga would focus everything into becoming a great footballer. There have been so many natural wonder kids before with insane raw talent, but if there's one thing that sets them apart, it's their attitude, mental strength, and discipline. All of which Camavinga had no choice but to build ever since that fateful day. And perhaps that is why even today, Camavinga is insanely mature for his age because the young Camavinga would develop his career at an incredibly insane pace. During his time at Ren, Camavinga would play a variety of roles, originally being placed as a striker since he was physically dominant and could bulldoze through defenders. But upon noticing just how incredibly versatile his set of skills were, he would be placed at a variety of roles, mainly switching from holding midfielder to central midfielder, but at times would even be assigned a center back and a left back. 
with former Ren player and wonder kid Hatem Ben Arfa even noting about Kemavinga, saying, There is nothing impossible for him. He's good in the air, can tackle, defend, assist, and even score. His playstyle is elegant, he's incredibly intelligent for his age, and he has a very powerful left foot. Then flash forward to 2018 when Kemavinga would finally be signed on a professional contract for Ren making him the youngest player to ever play for the club's first team at 16 years and 6 months old. I mean, we always talk about Brazilian wonder kids playing against grown men at 17, but here Kamavinga is playing against grown men in a top 5 league at an even younger age. Upon joining the first team, Kamavinga was so versatile that positioning him on the pitch would actually be a quite difficult task for his manager, because combining that versatility with genuine talent, dominant physicality, and an incredibly mature attitude and work ethic creates a truly a generational player, because honestly, that's what Kamavinga is. But Kamavinga was just so good at winning and maintaining possession and making incredibly perfect tackles that everyone in the club would start to call him Tackle Vinga, and he would be naturally forced to play further back as a holding midfielder or a hybrid left back that often came up and joined the attack. Just watching how he played at such a young age, dispossessing veterans and looking completely composed and in control when trying to maintain possession or pass shows just how mature his understanding for the game really is. Watching him, it's hard to believe he was a minor doing these things in Ligue 1. He even showed flashes of elite playmaking and the ability to go for goal. In fact, during a game versus PSG in 2019, he would only further solidify his generational talent by being the youngest player to ever have an assist in Ligue 1, and a few weeks later would be named the player of the month, also making him the youngest to ever receive the title in France. And if you ask me, it honestly looks like he's a mix of Clarence Seedorf and Rude Hulet. And no, before you say anything, I'm not just saying that because of his skin color. Huh? Clarence Seedorf is one of the greatest defensive mids of all time, with his best traits being his intelligence and composure on the pitch, drawing players towards him and maintaining possession with his effective and non-wasting dribbling, while at the same time opening up the pitch for his teammates and making the best advancing passes possible. And the man could even dribble it up by himself and lead the counterattack. Truly one of the most underrated midfielders of the 90s to 2000s, just because of his less flashy role. And just like him, you can see how Kamavinga really shows flashes of similar talent, just by the way he looks so composed when he's being pressed, and the fact that he gives his teammates a much better chance of receiving the ball. Trust me, a lot of young players at his age would be quick to get rid of the ball, but for Kamavinga, he knows when to hold on and when to make the quick pass, truly showing how his understanding for the game, especially from comparisons to Rude Hulet, a player who truly embodied the concept of total football. The former Ballon d'Or winner was a walking defensive tank who could dribble the ball and goal for goal all by himself. Truly a box-to-box -box midfielder in playmaking, defending, dribbling, passing, and a long-range shooting. And while the title of this video is kind of a meme, Rude Hulet really was, in the eyes of many, the most versatile footballer there ever was. A guy who was built like a center back and would involve himself in team play and score goals as well. And I know it sounds crazy, but I honestly believe that Kamavinga has the ability to be just as great as Hulet. We've seen occasions where Kamavinga has dribbled all by himself and acted as a playmaker or goes for goal himself. Kamavinga is like the perfect fusion between Seedorf and Hulet with the biggest difference, in my opinion, being just how incredibly good he is at timing and executing his tackles. Kamavinga can play with both intelligence and body anybody, pressing or trying to defend him. Again, the judo development really does help him on how to use his body and positioning to his advantage. I mean, really, especially today, a talent like Kamavinga is not only incredibly rare, but an also incredibly invaluable asset to any squad. Why do you think Real Madrid wanted him so badly and even signed him up until June 2027? That is a decision based on absolute belief in his ability. Heck, Kamavinga would even score a goal for his debut on the club, as well as providing an assist in his Champions League debut, where he would dribble the ball up himself and act as a playmaker. In fact, it was Kamavinga's incredible defensive presence immediately after he got inside the game because anyone who watched Real Madrid versus Man City in the 2022 Champions League will remember that as soon as he came in, Man City could not make any significant attacks at all, as he was an absolute wall winning possessions and making tackles left and right. He even started dribbling on the attack and looked even more composed than some of the veterans in Madrid, not being pressured to pass but continuously dribbling unfazed and unpressured to make the right plays to help his team. And probably the most underrated moment of his young career so far came in the World Cup Final. Because in the 71st minute when France was down 2-0, 
Camavinga was subbed in and immediately helped change the dynamic of the game. He honestly looked like the second best player on the squad aside from Mbappe. He was maintaining possession and actually looked like a man who wasn't scared, unlike most of his teammates who looked like they were too nervous to handle the ball. Playing so incredibly well that you can't help but wonder, why the hell didn't he play the entire match? Because I'm not even joking that France might have very well won the match if Camavinga had played from the very beginning. His defense was just phenomenal. I mean, if you didn't know any better, you'd think Dembele and Griezmann were the 20-year-olds compared to how Camavinga was playing that match, being so great that game that Argentina would begin to attack the opposite of wherever he was, and they didn't even let him take a penalty. That match was the final proof that truly sold me on Camavinga's generational potential. It's just so obvious how his experience with martial arts helps him so much in his timing and avoiding being faked out or feigned with skill moves. And hey, look at the man's goalkeeping ability too. I'm sure in a parallel universe, he's also an up and coming generational goalkeeping talent with just how intelligent and athletic the kid is. And I even asked my subscribers in a brief poll who they'd rather have in their club for the next 10 years. And unsurprisingly, Kamavinga would come on top. For people to be saying this about a player like Kamavinga truly shows you how generational he can be, though his position isn't exactly the most flashy. Everyone is still recognizing how different of a player he is. And if he stays healthy, the sky is the limit for Eduardo Kamavinga. But right now, he's already on the right path to becoming the most versatile footballer in the world.